Hi everyone. So the other day I posted a picture in the Mixed Media Morsels Facebook group where I had uh, done another one of the plastic wrap backgrounds and it had um, like rainbow colors and turned out really nice. I liked it a lot. Um, I'll insert a picture of that um, of that sheet that I did right here so that you can see what it looks like. So I decided uh, a lot of people were asking some questions about it. You know, what colors did I use? And, you know, just the whole gamut of questions. So I thought, well, I'll just do it again so that you all can see how I do it. The paper I used is this Canson uh, watercolor paper. And um, I did a whole full 9 by 12 sheet uh, the other day. That's what I posted on Facebook, the one that you just saw. And um, tonight I'm going to do this one and I'm going to use a half, of, a half of a sheet. Because it's late and I'm ready to go to bed. So I've already taken this sheet and put a coat of gesso on it. I've used this uh, Liquitex gesso. And um, I don't have any affiliation with any of these companies, by the way. I'm just showing you what I use so that you will know. So use this gesso. And it's already on this, on this paper and it's dry. You have to have this dry before you put on any of your paint, okay? All right, these are the colors that I'm using. All of these are Liquitex Basics colors. Uh, medium Magenta, Cadmium Yellow Light Hue, and Cerulean Blue Hue, okay? Those are the ones I'm using. And I used those the other day too. Same colors. All right. I've already watered down the paint so that I can get right to it. Here they are, all watered down. Okay, they've got like a milky consistency. They're very pourable. They would pour easily if I poured. <laughs> That's how wet you want this paint to be. Otherwise, the technique is not gonna work where you have those white exposed uh, cool shapes that you saw in that picture, okay? So I'm gonna have this here. And um, actually, I think I'll keep it in front of me. That's a little bit easier, I think. And I'm just gonna go ahead and, <clears throat> and get started. Got my brushes here already, the ones that I've mixed up this paint with. And so I'm good to go here. I think I might have misted this with water, and I'm not sure. So I'm going to mist it, but very lightly. I'm not going to cover it because it's got gesso on. It's not going to absorb into the paper like it would if it had no gesso. So I'm just going to give it a light mist like that. Okay, so I'm going to take some yellow, and this is what I did the, the other day too, by the way, just see how watery it is. Okay. All right, and then I'll take blue. If you mix that there with the yellow, it makes the green color. Okay. Now some pink. Mix the pink with the yellow, makes an orange color. <laughs> I'm 
if you mix the blue with the pink, it makes the purple color. Just like so. All right. Add a little bit more pink here. I don't like the fact that it curls just a little bit, but if you work quickly, you can get enough on there <clears throat> before there's a problem. Sorry about that. <laughs> that was not a good sound. <laughs> All right, then you take your plastic wrap, put it over the top, and you wanna squish up and make some wrinkles. So you, I'm pushing against the, uh, pushing against it right there. This corner didn't get color, so I'm gonna add some there, okay. Now, by pushing on it, you're making these peaks in the, in the uh, plastic wrap. Okay, you see those peaks that formed? All those peaks are what's gonna leave the white spots underneath when, you, when this is dry and you pull off the uh, plastic wrap. Okay, so that's how I did it. And it will do the same thing again this time. I can see that it's doing it, you know. So you don't want to just smash it all down flat. You want to push it up and make those peaks, these pieces that are sticking up. Let me see if I can lift it up so that you can see what I'm talking about there. See there, see how these are all raised? Every one of those ridges are raised. And what happened there is the paint pushed away from those. And so it's showing the white underneath from the gesso. Okay? And that's how it works. If you don't put gesso on the page, your paint will soak into your page much quicker. And so you won't get, you'll get some effect, but you won't get it as stark as what this will show you in the end. So I'll come back in the morning when this is dry and I'll finish the recording and um, I'll peel off the plastic while, while I'm filming. I'll peel it off so you can see how it looks and how it worked and we'll go from there. So for now, I'll say good night and I'll see you in the morning. So I had leftover paint, so I'm just adding it to another piece of um, watercolor paper that I sprayed with water. So I can use some of this up. Figured I would do a, another alcohol um, do the alcohol technique again, I guess I was trying to say. I have no gesso on this sheet. I'm just um, just putting the wet paint on. No gesso.
Okay. This works really well as long as you have um, really watery paint. If you don't, it won't react. And I don't know if I said that before, but it's true. All right, guys. Well, that was fun. <laughs> fun way to use that paint still have a little left. I'm not sure what I'll do with that, but there you go. Cool little alcohol technique. All right, now I'm going to bed. Bye. So there it is. Cool little alcohol technique and um, good way to use the paint. adding a couple more here and there all right all right see you soon okay so it's the next day it's actually two o'clock in the afternoon and I'm getting ready to take off the plastic wrap so I wanted to show you guys how it turned out so here we go so you can see what I was talking about where every one of these raised areas is that's where this white shows up There it is. So cool. I love this technique and it makes an awesome background. So that's what you guys wanted to know and here it is. Let's see if we can get a little close up shot. So that's that. And then here's the um, here's the one that dried. That was the alcohol um, technique that I did again uh, on this one. And um, looks pretty cool too. Uh, these colors are not quite as vibrant because they, I think it's because they tend to soak into the paper because this was not um, not gessoed at all, this sheet. Same paper, just not gessoed. And um, I think because it soaks in, it uh, it loses a little bit of the, um, the vibrancy. Now, if I take and um, put a coat of Mod Podge on here, it would look, it would look awesome because it would look shiny. Um, you can see how this one, um, see how shiny it is and that's just from the plastic wrap and um, I love how that leaves that shimmer on there it's so awesome and then the parts that are white in between are not shiny at all so you've got that contrast going on also so it's really really cool I love the way the plastic wrap leaves a finish as if it had been mod podged <laughs> 
so that's how I did it guys so now it's your turn to do it too and make sure your paint is really watery and then when you put your plastic wrap on push it in and make some of those wrinkles and those raised areas so that you can see the white underneath on yours too okay I decided to go ahead and put a coat of the Mod Podge on to show you how it looks so I think it looks really really cool and it's got a shine it's not quite as shiny as the uh, plastic wrap one but it does have a I mean this is the matte Mod Podge so it doesn't give a total glossy finish but it gives it just enough and it's not that chalky feeling anymore it feels nice and smooth and um, I think it made the colors uh, pop right out so yay all right just wanted to show you how it looked when it was finished all right guys see you soon bye bye